Let's turn our Bibles to Habakkuk chapter 2. The song was living by faith, and that's what we want to look at today, as Habakkuk tells us in chapter 2. So chapter 2, I'm going to read verses 1 through 4, and then we'll look at living by faith. Beginning at verse number 1. I will stand upon my watch, and set me upon the tower, and will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak, and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for your word, and we thank you that uh, we can look at this and, and see Habakkuk and see what uh, he sees. Uh, Lord, help us to see what you want us to see. Help us to recognize that uh, if we are going to live by faith, there are things that we need to put out of our lives and uh, trust you completely, no matter what. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Hang on to Habakkuk chapter 2 and go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, we'll start at verse number 1 and go down to verse number 5. Paul tells us, God tells us through the pen of Paul, he says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. He says, and you hath he quickened. He has made you alive. That's what the word quickened means. To be quick, scripturally, is talking about being alive. A quick rather than dead. But not that we're fast. But uh, he says, you, he has made alive, you who were dead in your trespasses and sins. And that's what Habakkuk, one of the things that Habakkuk is pointing out in Habakkuk 2.4, he says, the just or the righteous will live by his faith. And there's two ways we can look at that. Number one, by putting our, our faith in God, faith in Jesus Christ, we are made alive. So we are made alive because we are made uh, righteous. For by grace are you saved through faith. So faith and God's grace uh, make us alive from the dead. The just shall live by faith. And then, after we have put our faith in Jesus Christ, we are considered righteous. I mentioned it this morning. Justified means that God has declared us to be righteous. He has applied His righteousness to us, and we are declared righteous, so we are just. And since we're just, we are to live our lives by faith. Habakkuk himself had to live by faith. You notice what God says to him there. He says uh, in verse number 2, The Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables. By the way, table is not, he's not saying write it upon a kitchen table or a dining room table. He's talking about a tablet. Uh, whether it's a, they didn't have tablets or paper, but they had tablets of stone, maybe. Write it on the, the tablet, is what he's talking about. So write it down so people can read it. Make it plain upon tablets that he may run that readeth it. Then he says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time. You see a vision, and it's going to come to pass at some point. Maybe not even in Habakkuk's lifetime, but he would have to wait and watch 
what God said. He would have to live according to faith. He'd have to live according to what God says. God says makes a promise. He gives him a, a picture that he is supposed to see, and he sees the picture. But he says that vision is for a time that I have appointed for it. You may not see it, but you're just going to have to wait. You're going to have to live by faith and knowing what God uh, is saying. Habakkuk has already pointed out to us in, in chapter 1, uh, he knew and he saw that God was going to judge the country. But he also knew that God still is caring for Israel. If you look at verse number uh, 12, he speaks and he says to God, Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord my God, mine holy one? Then he says this, We shall not die. O Lord, Thou hast ordained them for judgment, them, the ungodly, and Almighty God, Thou hast established them for correction. But we are Your people. We're not going to die. Now, I don't believe he's talking about dying physically. I believe he's talking about the eternal punishment, eternal, eternal damnation. And he says, we're not going to die. We know that because our faith is in You. And so we will live by faith. So we're not going to die Something that we, you and I, need to know and remember because sometimes things come in our lives that turn our heads, make us doubt in some way, but we've always got to keep our heart and mind and focused on Jesus Christ, on God, because uh, we, can, we can lose it. We can doubt. We're not going to die. Oh, what? I said it this morning, we're all going to die, right? But again, that's not the point. The point is we're not going to have that eternal death, that second death that the Bible talks about. And so we live trusting God in every situation. Jesus said, remember what He said? He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. In Matthew chapter 28, He said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So, from those promises, we know He's always there. And whatever happens, whatever happens, even if I die, I know God is in control. And I know God will take care of those I love, even if I'm gone. Living by faith. John tells us that in 1 John 5, 4, he says, faith is our victory. Living by faith, we can have a victorious Christian life. Faith is the is believing and seeing the reality of God's promises. Faith is, like Hebrews says, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We see God's promises and we recognize that they are true. And we know that our faith... You know, living by sight. Paul says we live by faith, not by sight. Living by sight is weak. If we have to see things, we have to see what's, uh, know what's going to happen. Remember the Jewish people, the Pharisees, told Jesus we would see a sign from thee. And he says, you're not going to get a sign. Why? Because they needed to learn to live by faith. And so we, if we have to have sight, if we have to see and know exactly what's going to happen, then we're not living by faith and we are weak. We are weak as we stand before God. Have you ever thought of this? If you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you know that God says uh, that uh, you're saved. You believe that. You have faith in that. You have faith in God's promises and God's word that says when you put your faith in Christ, you have salvation. Have you ever seen salvation? No. Can't see that, can you? But you have faith that it's true. So why not live every day with the same understanding? You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Do you, how many of you are absolutely positive that the sun's going to come up tomorrow? If I'm around, even if I'm not around, 
unless Christ returns and ends the world right now, but I don't, He's not going to do that. When He comes to take me, I'm going to go be, to be with Him, but the world's going to continue. And so the sun's going to rise. How many of you know for a fact and are absolutely sure that you're going to wake up in the morning? There we have a problem. That's where we have to have faith. You go to sleep. It might happen to some people. I'm Maybe not in this room, but some people think they might go to bed, go to sleep, get ready to go to sleep. They're laying in bed thinking, am I going to wake up? You know, that's a, that's a bad way of living. We need to remember that I'm going to wake up because God is with me. And whether I wake up tomorrow in my bed or tomorrow in heaven, God still got me. I live by faith. Habakkuk also, through this, he needs to remember that he needs to wait. He lives by faith, takes waiting. We've talked about that. Waiting, uh, he, says, he says, though it tarry, wait for it. Verse number three. The vision is for an appointed time, and it's going to happen, but wait for it. And sometimes it's very hard, difficult to wait. We know that. Go to 1 Kings. We know this, this story, or maybe you know it, maybe you don't. But the story of, of uh, Elijah, as he had the contest with the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, and uh, ended up, God having the victory there and Elijah killing 400 prophets of Baal. And then Ahab, or, or, or Elijah left there and ran to uh, the city. I always, I always get this city, uh, name of the city wrong, but uh, Jezebel said, Elijah, basically I'm going to kill you. And Elijah ran ran away. Look at uh, verse number 5. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he rose and and did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. Forty days. Forty days is a month and ten days, right? Pretty close. He's running away from Jezebel because he thinks he's the only person who's following God. While he is running, he's waiting on God. Now, sometimes when we wait for something, we get impatient and we forget about the responsibilities that we have. God wants us to wait on the Lord. God's going to do something in our lives. God's going to work out your salvation. God's going to work out the problems in your life. Continue doing His will now. Because if you stop, if you start dwelling on the problem or the situation, you're not going to get the things done that he wants you to get done. Elijah was running from Jezebel at the same time. In all of this time, time passing, he's actually learning, learning something that he didn't, uh, he didn't believe. He learned things that he thought he knew, but he really didn't know. When God tell, told him there's 9,000 people that still haven't bowed the knee to Baal, that was something Elijah didn't know. Even though Elijah was a prophet of God and God talked to him and gave him uh, instructions on things, he never told him there's 9,000 people. Elijah had to learn as he waited. Look back at Habakkuk chapter 2 and, and notice again verse number 4. And as he tells us, the just shall live by faith. But this is one of those verses where he gives us a, a statement and then he finishes the verse by giving another statement that is in, in a sense, opposition to the first part of the, the verse. He says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. But, remember that word, but, 
kind of sets aside what he just said and gives us something new. It doesn't take it away, but it helps us not dwell on that. Okay, but he says, the, the, uh, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Now, so what does that tell us about the just or the righteous in, in this verse? Tell us, tells us that the just or the righteous don't have their soul lifted up. The soul which is lifted up is not upright. What does it mean to be lifted up? Pride. The person who is living their life with a sense of pride, his soul is not upright. It's not, it's not good. It's not right inside of him because his heart is not right. So the just or the righteous are not those people who are lifting up their soul, lifting up their uh, pride. Go over to Hebrews chapter 12. When you study the book of Proverbs, you find that those people who are proud will not put their faith in Jesus Christ reason they don't put their faith in Jesus Christ is because they think they can take care of everything by themselves. They don't need God. Look at Hebrews 12, verse number 1. He says, Wherefore, now we're not going to deal with what he said before this. He says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now let me finish the verse number 2, but I'm going to come back to verse 1. He says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. <clears throat> so he says, To run with patience the race that is set before us. I want to use the term oxymoronic. Okay, oxymoron is a statement that you read that it kind of contradicts itself right in the middle. It uses two words to describe almost opposites. If you are running in a foot race, you're going around a track or in a foot race for a 100-yard dash or something. What's your purpose? Your purpose is to win. Okay, why would you want to run knowing you're going to be the last one? Well, forget it. Just, I'll just stay out of the race. No, we run, and we run in order to win. And in a foot race, where does patience come in? How, how pa are you going to, you're going to just walk? and wait for the finish line to come to you? There, why, why would you say patient if you're running? How, you, how are you patient? Man, I don't, I don't want that guy to get, get up to me. If I, want, if I want him to come up and I want to be patient to wait for him, then I'll slow down. But that's not my point. That's not my purpose. I'm running fast. So that's why I'm saying oxymoron. Because he says we run with patience. But when you're looking at our life, living this life now we're not we're not supposed to be at a fast pace we are to be living for the Lord living this life is what he's talking about and living this life there are things that are going to come things that we're going to wait for things that we want to happen we have to learn to have patience in this life don't be in a hurry about it because God has his timing we saw that last week God has his timing, so we need patience to live this life race. And if we continue to live by faith, running with patience, we will have the victory. Faith is the victory. And so Habakkuk, we see... One of the things that are in opposition to faith. We, we, we've talked about fear. 
when we have fear and we're afraid of something and we're not turning it over to God and we worry and we fret about it, we know that's opposition to faith because we're supposed to just trust God, right? But in Habakkuk 2, he tells us also that pride is in opposition to faith. When we think we can handle a situation, we think we can do it, we can, uh, we don't, and again, I know as a Christian, we will not say, we will not say, I don't need God to help me with this. If we would say that, we're a pretty bad Christian. I don't need God. Every, we, we will acknowledge that we need God at every situation, no matter what. And so somebody with pride, without Christ, already just, they've never put their faith in Christ, their pride <coughs> blocks their desire for a need of Christ, a need for God. I can handle it. Their mind says, I don't need that. I don't have that, uh, that weakness that Christians have. Christians don't have a weakness. They know where their strength is, okay? When I am weak, then I am strong because I'm trusting in the Lord. But uh, the writer to the Hebrews says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We need to look unto Jesus. Keep Jesus at the forefront of our minds. Because when we set him aside and we forget, <laughs> we, we do set him aside sometimes. Not that we're on purpose setting him aside. We just get involved with life and we forget him. But when we put him aside and we don't have faith in him, then where are we looking? Looking unto Jesus? No. We're looking unto something else. It might be ourselves. It might be to some other person. It might be to some sort of counselor somewhere. But we need to acknowledge God in every situation. Keep him at the forefront of our minds. Because when we move along without him, what we are doing is we are putting ourselves in control of our lives. Now, I didn't say we're putting ourselves under control. I'm saying we are controlling the situation. We are putting ourselves as master of our life. And that's what the soul who lifts up in pride is does. We need to learn that we're always hanging on to Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. If faith is the victory, then there's defeat and pride. We need to remember, pride goeth before destruction. Go to Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16 and verse number 18. Let's, let's look at verse 17 first. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. The haughty spirit is pride. It's just another way of talking about pride. It goes before a fall. You're going to destroy yourself or you're going to destroy somebody else if we walk and live in pride. Pride is the world's emotion. Pride is what the world has. And God hates pride. Go to 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2 and look at verse number 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is what? Of the world. 
So pride is not of God. Pride is the world's emotion. If Christian Christians either going to follow the world in pride or they're going to follow Christ. Let's follow Christ. Don't let our heart be lifted up uh, and because our heart would not be upright within us. We need to have faith in Christ daily, living by faith. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for being with us. Thank you for guiding us and giving us instruction through your word. I pray that you would help us to live by faith. Help us to look to Christ, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Faith, help us to follow him. I pray in Jesus' name, amen.